Muslim scholars and apologists give different answers to different questions, depending on who's asking the questions and on who's listening to the answers. If a Muslim man asks a Muslim scholar a question, and the only people who are paying attention to the answer are other Muslim men, that Muslim scholar will typically try to give an accurate Islamic response. But if a similar question is being asked by a Christian, the Muslim scholar will give a very different response. And the response will differ even further depending on whether the Christian who's asking the question knows what's in the Muslim sources or doesn't know what's in the Muslim sources. In other words, if the Muslim scholar can tell that the Christian who's asking the question knows what's in the Quran and the Hadith, he'll try to give a response that fits the Quran and the Hadith, even though he's twisting the meaning. But if the Muslim scholar can tell that the Christian who's asking the question has no clue what's in the Quran and the Hadith, he'll flat out lie about what Islam teaches. Interesting religion. As an example, Let's consider how different Muslim scholars and apologists respond to the issue of child marriage in Islam. For many years, when Christians or atheists would ask Muslims about child marriage in Islam, we'd be told that there's no such thing as child marriage in Islam. Aisha was a fully grown, mature woman. She was probably 18 or 21 years old when Muhammad married her. That's the response Muslim scholars and apologists gave back when they thought they could get away with lying. But times have changed, and a lot of people know what the Muslim sources say about child marriage. So, now, Muslim da'is, imitating their scholars, try to give a response that looks like it fits the Muslim sources, even though they're twisting the meaning. Take Ali Dawa, who says that if his daughter gets her first period at the age of nine, he'll tell her that she's ready for marriage. If my daughter reached the age of menstruation at nine years old, I would say you are ready. What's it like this? You are ready to get married. Pretty gross. But if you let Ali Dawa explain his position further, he'll say that his daughter would have to be ready in all sorts of ways, physically, psychologically, and sexually. And he pretends that this is what Islam teaches. Why is he answering like this? because he's talking to people who know something about Islam. People now know that Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl, so it's too late to lie about that. But people generally don't know whether Islam requires that a girl has reached puberty or that she's reached any other milestones. So popular da'is like Ali Dawa twist what Islam teaches based on the knowledge level of the person they're talking to. Muhammad Hijab gets a little closer to the truth when he's talking to a group of Muslims because he understands that some of those Muslims know what the Quran says. So Hijab admits that the Quran allows and even promotes sex with prepubescent girls. If you look just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. If you just read the Quran, it is halal, it would, just, it would be halal to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. He even admits that other Muslim sources can't be interpreted to mean that a girl has to reach puberty before marriage because Muslims can't get around what the Quran says. I want all Muslims to be aware of this. The reason why we don't have sexual intercourse with five-year-olds and six-year-olds and seven-year-olds or whatever is not because of puberty. Wait a minute, what did you say? It's not because of puberty, because that verse in the Quran actually says Lam yahidn. They never had puberty before. You can't go around that. Yes, Muhammad Hijab just threw Ali Dawa under the bus. But Hijab will still insist that the girl has to reach some sort of milestone. Namely, she has to reach some level where sex isn't going to harm her. How in the name of common sense can a man know how much psychological and physical harm he's going to cause to a prepubescent girl if he starts having sex with her? Hijab doesn't explain, but somehow the da'is are the experts in all matters related to sex with prepubescent girls. They've developed a science of pedophilia. Again, interesting religion. Now, I wanted to contrast the claims made by Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab with the response given by a world-renowned Muslim scholar. When this world-renowned Muslim scholar was answering a Muslim and he didn't think that Christians or atheists would be paying attention to his answer. So, who's our world-renowned Muslim scholar? 
Let's read about him in The Muslim 500, the world's 500 most influential Muslims. Mufti Ibrahim Desai died last year, but up until his death, he was one of the world's most influential Muslims. A prominent and world-renowned scholar, Mufti Desai has been issuing fatwas in various fields for more than 25 years. He runs the Darul Ifta Mahmudiya in Sherwood, Durban, South Africa, where he trains students to become muftis. He also issues fatwas through the askimam.org website. He is an Islamic finance expert who serves as Sharia advisor to various Islamic financial institutions. So, there are Muslims who are influential for all kinds of reasons. Mufti Ibrahim Desai was influential for his expertise in Islamic law. Not only was he a mufti, a Muslim legal expert, he was a mufti who trains other muftis. They mention his fatwas, Sharia-based legal rulings, on askimam.org. Let's read a question and the mufti's response. This is from 2002, back when there weren't a lot of critics rummaging through fatwa sites, so the mufti felt safe to give the true Islamic response. A concerned Muslim writes, I am 45 and married to already 15 years now after the sexual desire of my woman has nearly gone, I am looking to marry again. And I would like to marry a woman who is 12 years old. Her father and she has also agreed. My first wife told me that it could make problems if it will be a big different in age. And also some of my children are older than my second wife. What is your advice? And is it allowed for me to have already sexual intercourse with these women after we are married, or do I have to wait till she reach at special age? So, there are a lot of issues here. He wants a second wife. He wants to marry a 12-year-old girl. The girl is younger than some of his children. Is it okay to marry her now? If so, does he have to wait until she reaches some particular age before he has sex with her? How does an expert in Islamic law respond when he thinks we're not paying attention? According to the Sharia, if a girl is a minor, did not attain puberty, she may be given in marriage by her father. There is no age limit to be intimate with one's wife, even if she is a minor. So, yes, you can marry her, even if she hasn't reached puberty, and yes, you can have sex with her, even if she hasn't reached puberty. This isn't the Mufti's personal opinion. This is according to the Sharia. But he continues, It is important for you, in your situation, to consider the age difference reservation expressed by your wife. And Allah to Allah knows best. Mufti Ibrahim Desai. Notice, it's fine to marry a prepubescent girl. It's fine to have sex with a prepubescent girl. But you should consider the age difference when you're deciding whether to marry her. Why does Mufti Ibrahim Desai say that the man should take the age difference into account? Muhammad was 51 years old when he married Aisha, who was six years old. Muhammad had sex with Aisha when she was only nine. Muhammad died when Aisha was 18, leaving her a childless widow for the rest of her life because he told his followers that they couldn't marry his wives after he died. So why take age difference into account? Because Muhammad did pay attention to age difference when people wanted to marry his daughter, Fatima. Sunan an nasai 32.21. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Bareda that his father said, Abu Bakr and Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, proposed marriage to Fatima, but the messenger of Allah said, she is young. Then Ali proposed marriage to her and he married her to him. Did you catch that? Abu Bakr and Umar wanted to marry Muhammad's daughter, but they were much older than her. And Muhammad replied, no way. She's too young for you, you creepy old perverts. So Muhammad, the hypocrite, did take age into consideration when it was his own daughter, just not when it was Abu Bakr's daughter. All this means, of course, is that age is something to consider. 
but as long as you've considered it, you are free to marry and have sex with a prepubescent little girl, according to Sharia. That's the answer you'll get if you're a Muslim asking a Muslim scholar. If you're a non-Muslim asking a Muslim scholar, you'll get a completely different answer. If you have no idea what Islam teaches, you'll be told that Islam totally forbids child marriage. If you already know that Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl, you'll be told that Aisha had reached puberty even though she hadn't. A discussion with a scholar would probably go something like this. Hi, I'm thinking about converting to Islam, but I've heard that Islam allows sex with prepubescent girls. Is that true? That depends. Do you want to have sex with a prepubescent little girl? What? No, that's disgusting. Oh, then it is strictly forbidden in Islam. Uh, now that I've uh, answered your question, uh, just go ahead and convert. <laughs> Wait, why are you giggling? Oh, I'll tell you later, after you convert and you're no longer allowed to question Allah or Muhammad. What is this religion, where their greatest scholars freely discuss having sex with prepubescent girls among themselves, but as soon as the rest of us are listening, they suddenly deny it and start calling us liars for pointing out what their religion clearly and obviously teaches. Once they switch from giving fatwas to giving dawah, all the teachings of Islam mysteriously transform, like the world's ugliest and slimiest slug putting on a butterfly costume and trying to flap its tail. What can I say? Dawa is deception. It just backfired on you. It just backfired on you. This is a power of religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.